Well, welcome back to the channel, my friends. In this video, we're gonna pick up where we left off talking about XML RPC, which facilitates remote communications between WordPress websites and external applications using the XML RPC protocol. But more creatively, we're gonna make a bug bounty one-liner to search for this because XML RPC has been associated with security vulnerabilities like brute force attacks and distributed denial of service attacks, which is reportable over here on HackerOne. If we do a quick search for a bug bounty report, you can see some XML RPC PHP reports written up on HackerOne. And if you want to learn more about attacking WordPress, check out this Hack the Box module called Attacking WordPress. And it goes over how to do brute force attacks and go after XML RPC PHP files. Or you can just subscribe below and join the hunt together. So in this bug bounty hunt, I'm first going to head over to hunter.how. Now, if you're not familiar with Hunter.how, it's pretty much the same thing as Shodan, but I typically find better results on Hunter.how than I do on Shodan when I'm searching for military domains and Department of Defense, which is what I'm going to showcase here. As you can see here in my query, I'm looking for XML RPC PHP files with the domain suffix MIL which is military websites and the Department of Defense scope. And you can see if I do a search for the past year, it gives us quite a few queries. Now this is great and all, but I can't do anything with this information on the screen. What I want to do is I want to pull out the IP addresses, put them in one text file, and I want to pull out the domain names and put them in another text file. And as you can see here, we have 10 queries per a page. So we want to query each page, grab 10 queries, grab the IPs, grab the domains. And to do that, we come over here to the API documentation. And what we need to do is we need to create a Python 3 script. And the Python 3 script is stringent on a few specific query types. So the first one needs to be base64 URL encoded is required. Start time and end time are both required in your script and the rest of the fields are optional. And here is a quick example that they give us to build our search query. So let's go ahead and jump over to our Kali Linux machine. And here is my Python 3 script. As you can see, I'm importing requests. I'm importing base64. I'm going to put in my API key, which is used to authenticate to hunter.how. Here is the query that we saw earlier on hunter.how's website. And then here we're going to encode it in base64. We're going to start iterating through the first page of the results. And here is the page size of 10 that we saw earlier on hunter.how's website. Our start and end times, our fields parameter, and then we're gonna construct right here the URL for the API query with the placeholders that we want. We're then going to send a get request and we're looking for a status code of 200. We're then going to parse the JSON request. We're gonna check if the status code was successful and then we're going to initialize an empty list to store domains and IP addresses. Here we're gonna iterate through each entry in the result list, and then we're gonna append domain names to the list, and we're gonna append the same for IP addresses to the list. Here we're gonna open the domains text file for writing domains to, and then we're also gonna remove any duplicates that it finds. And we're going to do the same for the IPs, and we're gonna remove any IP that are duplicate as well. And then we're going to print the statement domains save to domains.txt and IPs are saved to IPs.txt. Otherwise, if no results are found, it's going to print no results found. And then it's going to print any errors if it fails. So at the end of this script, we should have one text file with domains and one text file with IP addresses to do further recon with. Let's go ahead and run that script.
And here we have a text file for domains and a text file for IP addresses. Now we can combine both of these into one text file called combine.txt if we want. And then if we do a word count, you can see we have 12 lines over on combine.txt. So here comes our bug bounty one-liner. We're going to cat combine.txt, we're gonna pipe it over to awk, and we're gonna print xmlrpc.php, or we're gonna append that to the end of each line. We're then going to send it over to httpx, with this path and we're going to output the status codes and we're looking for a status code of 200 which means that the request has been accepted as you can see we got a 404 a 301 which means that it's been moved and then we got a 403 here here we got a 200 which is a good status code which means that it accepted this request for us so I'm not ready yet to report this vulnerability. I'm more curious on what else is running on this IP address. So here you guys can see that I'm running nmap-sv for the service version enumeration. And, and we can see that port 53 is open to DNS mask 2.87 test 5. So port 53 is open. So what does this mean? Let's go ahead and do a little bit further enumeration on this and testing. And what I wanna test for is an open DNS resolver. To do that, I'm gonna type in dig plus short to test open resolver.com. And as you can see that an open DNS resolver has been detected on this IP address. So what does that mean? An open DNS resolver responds to DNS queries from any source, so attackers can exploit open resolvers to perform a distributed denial of service attack, and they send a small DNS query with a spoof source IP, usually the victim's IP. The resolver then responds with a much larger response, overwhelming the victim with traffic. So here we found two quick vulnerabilities by using hunter.how to grab our domains and then putting them into two separate word lists or combining them into one word list if you wanted. Piping that over to awk to print xmlrpc.php file to append to each one and then pipe that over to httpx. So we have an xmlrpc file and we have an open DNS resolver detected. So if you like this content, guys, go ahead and subscribe to the channel below. Follow along on the hunt. Check out some of these commands. Use them on your hacker one scope. Find a vulnerability. Go ahead and do the write-up if you'd like. Report it. You can see this one was reported as a medium vulnerability just by having the XML RPC PHP file enabled on this, this website here. And the weakness is a violation of secure design principles. As you can see here, it's vulnerable to brute force attacks via the XML RPC protocol, which you can learn over here on Hack the Box Academy. Or, like I said, you can just subscribe to the channel below, guys. Stay tuned, and until the next video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys out there on the hunt.